Hey there guys, what's going on? So it's been a long while since we've done anything over here, what I like to call the vinyl corner. The last time I did this little segment, in fact, it was an extended split edition between the Japan Droids and Andrew Bird, but the formula turned on its head a little bit. However, 2012 is over now. It was another positive year for the vinyl industry, and I, as the rabid collector I am, will certainly have a lot more to talk about here in 2013. With that in mind, to get things started off on the right foot here, I felt it would be ideal to pick one of the longtime veterans of the indie rock genre. I will initially state that it's not a band I'm really all that familiar with in their almost 30 year history, but I found their newest release to be immediately appealing and thus worthy to be first up on all the reviews to come here in this brand new year. So without further ado, let's open up the curtain on the new music season in this 42nd installment of The Vinyl Corner with the New Jersey area band Yola Tango and their new album Fade. Enjoy. So there's certainly a lot of history when it comes to Yola Tango, but I shall try to make it as much of a summary as possible. Basically, the group began as a husband and wife duo, consisting of Ira Kaplan and Georgia Hubley back in 1984, and the name of the group comes from a humorous old baseball story that's definitely one of the more unique band name stories I've ever heard. Anyway, the band also went through a variety of early additional members, including Dave Schramm, Dave Rick, and Mike Lewis, eventually settling on James McNew as the third member of a trio that's gone strong since 1992. It didn't take long for the band to draw acclaim from the critics as the years went on, though they've always managed to maintain a cult following and haven't ever managed to cross into the mainstream at any point. They've long been known for their ability to cover a variety of artists, ranging from Todd Rundgren to Cat Stevens and Daniel Johnston, and for their great range of influences in the realm of folk and indie rock and experimental and noise pop and alternative. No matter the avenues, it seems as though Yola Tango just keeps learning how to surprise over the course of 13 studio albums with fuzzed out jams, acoustic meanderings, horn sections, jazz touches, strings. It's never about staying too straight down the pathway for too long. Their new album Fade is just the latest landmark along the highway that touches back on staples such as 1997's I Can Hear the Heart Beating as One, and as my first true excursion into the group, it's certainly been very interesting. But that is just barely scratching the surface of what this band has managed to do in a career stemming nearly 30 years, and basically what I can really tell you courtesy of basic research and knowledge that I'm truly just beginning to take in. I suggest going to dig for yourself, but first, it's time for a review. Here are my thoughts on Yola Tango and their brand new 2013 album, Fade. Enjoy. Sometimes off with the growling paranoia of percussive rocker Ohm, it immediately becomes evident that Yola Tango has a definite skill for stretching the skin of differing musical structures over the bare bones of a pop song. What initially might be seen as the inaccessible is more akin to the cracking of the oyster. Once you get past the facade of the outer shell, Fade is a lot more about the rewarding innards, which quickly becomes evident once Ohm bleeds through into Is That Enough? Suddenly, the slightly unhinged, feedback-laced exploration becomes a gently crackling hum over the top of strings and an almost loungy breeze, with Ira Kaplan taking out a vocal that recalls Thurston Moore on his recent Demolished Thoughts album. Combine his blending with that of bandmate and wife Georgia Hubley, and the track takes on a twice as sentimentally tender take that shows even after decades together, this trio can still pull back the curtain and expose the fragile roots waiting beneath. And it's a very believable aspect of their sound that doesn't at any point come off as being forced or too expected. In fact, Fade is just the opposite and seems to believe in perpetually making that left turn. What starts as a lingering rustle of keys on Well You Better soon turns into a slightly spacey toe tapper. The empty stage guitar meandering of stupid things soon develop a throbbing pulse and what feels like a distraction from its evident loneliness. And Cornelia and Jane keeps horns faintly calling from the collective ether in response to what's mostly a simple acoustic bass. It keeps the journey feeling spontaneous, and hearing Georgia split vocals with Ira is yet another variation that makes the elements within this record, as well as this band, work so well. Things we did, I'm thinking. The joke we 
left unsaid Unsure how and when we were misled When all is said and done, Yola Tango's Fade definitely ranks right up there as a pleasant surprise for me. Not that I was expecting one thing or another, but when you choose to open yourself up to a new group on the later side of their musical career, it can often be a mixed bag. You might be missing a lot of highlights, it might help to understand the band a bit better, and I always feel it's usually more difficult to go front to back as opposed to beginning to end. Nevertheless, it's a sound that definitely works for me, and one that would definitely make me curious to explore more of their studio output. But, that's another story. My favorites from this one are the aforementioned Ohm, Is That Enough, and Stupid Things, as well as the slow and hazy, horn-speckled sprawl of Closer Before We Run. Whether it incorporates the drone of feedback, the swell of strings, the croon of horns, or just the straightforward attack of rock guitars, Yola Tango is a band that definitely comes as advertised. They're experts at the pop song, but even more capable of disguising it behind textures and loops of sound that keeps Fade twisting and moving eloquently. I give it an 8.7 out of 10. That's it, and that's all for me in this Vinyl Corner installment, guys. Ordinarily, of course, you would see me talking about the vinyl in this space, but if you want to know more about that, all you have to do is check out the unboxing video I did not too long ago. It'll definitely fill you in a lot more, and it makes a very complete series along with the review in this video. But until next time, folks, keep your music flowing and your vinyl spinning. I will see you all very, very soon. Running away to stay.